It's 4.30. This is WKYT This Morning. Hillary Clinton makes history and tells voters she plans on uniting the country. We're on the campaign trail just ahead. Some Zika virus cases in Florida are impacting blood donations in Kentucky. We'll find out what precautions the blood center here is taking. And Kentucky State Police are hoping some new technology will help break a cold case. That and your weather ahead on WKYT This Morning. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning to you. It's finally Friday, and we welcome you to WKYT This Morning. I'm Bill Bryant. I'm Rebecca Smith. It is a burst alert, severe weather day. We want to let you know about that with Micah. Yeah, and we're going to be looking at isolated flooding. That means one or two spots, and that's about it, but we got to watch for that as these storms roll across the region. It's hit and miss today. It's a 40% chance of rain. Obviously, not everybody will see the rain today, but if you do, you could get some locally heavy downpours. 84 degrees, and we get off towards your weekend. We still have that hit and miss activity in the forecast, at least for one of those days, and I'm going to show you which day coming up. Thank you. Some roads in Montgomery County were closed for some time because of flash flooding. Hingston Creek rose out of its banks and it nearly reached a machine shop that sits nearby. The owner says he has dealt with flooding problems there before. Uh, last year in uh, May or April, we had five feet of water in there. Five feet. Took out everything I had. The water did not make it into his business this time, but he says the nearby area is flood prone. Remember, you can help track the storms with the WKYT Weather Plus Traffic app. You can download that for free in the app or Google Play stores. Turning to politics this morning, Hillary Clinton has made history as the first woman to accept a major party's nomination for president. During Clinton's speech at the Democratic National Convention, she told voters she would unite the country in divided times. Weijia Zhang covers the campaign from Philadelphia. Hillary Clinton made history in Philadelphia. I accept your nomination. She's the first woman to accept a major party's nomination for president. We will build an economy where everyone who wants a good job can get one. Clinton drew a contrast with her Republican rival, Donald Trump. He wants to divide us from the rest of the world and from each other. Chelsea Clinton, who could become the first daughter for a second time, introduced her mother. That feeling of being valued and loved that's what my mom wants for every child. The Democrats touted this convention as the most diverse and emphasized inclusiveness. The father of an American Muslim army captain who was killed in Afghanistan brought the room to its feet with this question to Trump. Let me ask you, have you even read the United States Constitution? I will gladly lend you my copy. Clinton and running mate Tim Kaine have about 100 days to convince voters that they are the ticket of inclusion and hope. Weijia Jang, CBS News, Philadelphia. Clinton and Kaine have two campaign stops planned today in the swing state of Pennsylvania. Investigators are trying to figure out if a series of Zika virus infections in South Florida were spread by mosquitoes on the U.S. mainland. For now, the Food and Drug Administration has suspended all blood donations in the Miami area. That's having an effect here in the bluegrass. WKYT's Monique Blair explains how the Kentucky Blood Center is reacting. 80% of people who get Zika infections don't even get sick, so I can be perfectly healthy and donate some blood. In the meantime, that Zika virus can be circulating in my bloodstream for about six, seven days. The Food and Drug Administration is recommending that all blood centers throughout the country begin temporarily deferring donors who have traveled to Miami-Dade and Broward counties in the last 28 days in an effort to assure the safety of blood and blood products. Martha Osborne with the Kentucky Blood Center tells me the Kentucky Blood Center is following that recommendation. So this is the first time that blood centers will have to ask about travel within the continental United States. Our travel question in the past was always, have you been outside the U.S.? Now it's tell us about your travel. 
Osborne says it's common for blood donations to slow down during the summer. And now that it's likely that more donors will have to be temporarily turned away, Osborne says if you do meet the requirements to donate, it's important you do so. Osborne says the FDA made their recommendation out of an abundance of caution. And right now, officials have not reported a non travel related Zika outbreak in Kentucky. There's not really a high risk to the blood supply, particularly in Kentucky. In Lexington, Monique Blair, WKYT. Now, if you have donated blood in the past few days in Kentucky and you have traveled to Miami, Dade, or Broward counties in the month, you can call the Kentucky Blood Center if you have questions about your blood donation. Kentucky State Police hopes some new technology leads to clues in an unsolved murder. They say someone found a man's decomposed body back in 1989 in a Grant County barn. Police have not been able to identify the victim. They released this digitally enhanced picture, hoping that someone recognizes him. WKYT's Garrett Weimer talked to investigators about this case. Her husband has passed away, and Lois Adams is getting older. But she just can't we forget what her husband time, found, table, April 9th, 1989. He'd come in and he said, there's a dead man down there. And we said, what? And of course, he was just stunned. Police say the man was shot in the head, his body partially decomposed, both hands cut off. They believe he was murdered somewhere else, his body dumped in the tobacco barn where Billy Adams found him. He was laying on his back and his this hand was sticking up, this one arm where the, arm, the hand was cut off. 27 years later and that barn is still standing. The murder case, though, has gone cold. Police hope new technology will change that. They've released this digitally enhanced photo of the victim, hoping that someone will be able to identify who he was. This is somebody's child. You know, this is somebody's son. And, you know, it could have been somebody's father, you know, husband or whatever. It's helped identify that subject, help the family, you know, put this to rest and, to, and to, you know, catch a murderer. Lois Adams says they never had locks on their door until that day. A scary discovery still unsolved when her husband died 10 years ago and still unsolved yeah, was, today. Pretty, it bothered him quite a bit. And then we not knowing what happened and we still don't know what happened. But in Grant County, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. Police developed the photo thanks to technology from the National Missing and Unidentified Persons System. They say they think the man was between 20 and 30 years old, about six foot four and weighing 220 pounds. He's already Kentucky's longest serving U.S. Senator ever, and it looks like Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell wants to extend that run. The Republican was first elected to the Senate in 1984. He still has four years left in his current term. But during a taping of WKYT's Kentucky Newsmakers, I asked Senator McConnell if he will run again in 2020. I'm at the top of my game. I think I've been effective in serving our people. and. Uh, there's a great likelihood I'll run again. You can see more of my interview with Senator Mitch McConnell on Kentucky Newsmakers this weekend. It airs Sunday morning at 6 on WKYT and Sunday morning at 10 on the CW Lexington. We also talked a lot about his book, uh, talks about his uh, growing up and so forth, but he will have done 36 years in the Senate at the end of this term. Amazing. And it may go for another term. Not so. slowing down, apparently. Uh, right. WKYT this morning, just getting started on your Friday. If you are throwing an outdoor party this summer, we have some tips to make it the place to be. Your abode, that is. That's coming up on WKYT this morning. We have more rain chances in the forecast, and it'll be possible as we go throughout the day and your weekend. And I'll have that seven day up next. A meteorologist Micah Harris with your weather update early in the morning. If you're about to take off, there are bits and pieces of a couple of light showers across the region at this moment. And let's zoom on in and show you where they are in Nicholas County, or Nicholasville, that is, just south of Nicholasville downtown and just south of the bypass. That's heading over toward the east. So if you're sitting around, say, the RJ Corman area, that's where you're seeing one of those little showers roll on through. There's a bits and pieces 
forming back behind that along 68 as well. And all that's heading eastbound. Should roll over the Clays Ferry Bridge here in just about 15 to 20 minutes. So if you're in that region or headed that way, just watch out for a light shower. More of the same. Clementsville, Dunville, roll up 127 into Liberty in Casey County. This one's coming out of northern portions of Adair County and also Taylor County. And like I said, this is bits and pieces of some light showers, and that's about it this morning. 71 degrees there in Lexington. We're at 73 degrees in Frankfurt. Now, if you look outside, you can actually see some clearing of the skies. This is not going to be a widespread rain type of day. This is going to be an isolated shot at flooding, meaning one, maybe two spots could get some flash flooding. So that's going to be the case. It's, it's not so much about the temperature, still about the rain, but nonetheless, it is hit and miss, meaning you could see the rain and then go down the street and you may not see any rain. Heavy downpours, though, out of those. There's still a lot of moisture outside, so anything that forms over you more than likely will put down some heavy rain. I would say south of 64 and southeast, that's where we're going to be seeing the best chance, not the only chance, but the best chance to see a couple of rumbles of thunder pass through. And then later on this evening, off into the night, we get another round that's going to roll on through. Could be one of our times that we could see some thunderstorms with that, too. So Saturday, we get into Saturday. More showers, more rumbles of thunder. It's hit and miss again on Saturday. Not everybody sees rain, but if they do, yeah, here we go again. Locally, heavy rains in the forecast. And off towards Sunday, it's more of a smaller chance. Still on the humid side, still temperatures there in the mid 80s. But really, it's today and tomorrow we got to watch very closely because we did pick up tremendous amounts of rain in some spots, not all spots. Most spots yesterday were a half an inch to about two inches of rain, and some spots were three and four inches of rain. A few isolated spots. I mean, there was some really heavy rain in a few locations, just one after another. So here's your seven day forecast. It's hit and miss for today, and that goes for tomorrow too. Then we head off into your uh, uh, week next week, and we're sitting there in the mid to upper 80s and looking for those much smaller chances of rain in the forecast. But guys, today, like we were talking about, we have the first alert severe weather day for you to let you know there is an isolated chance. that The ground's very saturated. You get one thunderstorm over you, and that could cause a few issues. But no widespread weather, no widespread flooding expected, so there's some good news. Yesterday, we had a couple spots, really two spots, that we had to watch very close. One being Mount Sterling mm -hmm. that got tremendous amounts of rain. And, yeah. and when you get into those valley areas, that's where it's it's really starting to flood, and, and that's uh, flood pr prone areas basically. Can you really know add where up. it is, absolutely, and you know where you live, so just keep that in mind. Okay, that was, sudden downpours can cause trouble. That's right. Thank you, Micah. 445 entertaining guests can be a lot of fun, but it's also a lot of work. Yeah, I usually prefer to leave it to someone else to do all that. <laughs> Today's Moms Overdue Minute has some tips, though, if you happen to be hosting an elegant party. Now is the season to invite over friends and neighbors for an outdoor soiree. Your party will be the most fashionable in town with a little help from Andrew Skipper. Today I'm going to give you five tips to make outdoor entertaining easier on yourself. No one wants to spend all their time carrying things back and forth from the house. So tip number one is to invest in a large sturdy tray. You want to make sure that it has a nice lip on it so that your dishes don't fall off when you're carrying it and make sure that it has easy handles to carry. Tip number two is to invest in dish towels to use as napkins instead of paper napkins. These are going to be heavier so they won't blow away with the first gust of wind and they are larger than linen napkins. Tip number three is to use indoor-outdoor placemats. In lieu of a tablecloth, these are easier to wipe down and you can use them indoors all year long. I prefer to use cut glass pieces because they catch the sun's rays and add a nice sparkling effect to any event. If you want to draw people to a certain space and create ambiance, invest in glass cylinders of different sizes. Even more tips from Andrew can be found at MomsEveryDay.com. For these tips and more, go to WKYT.com, click on Moms Every Day. And WKYT this morning on the air with all the latest on your Friday. We're sure glad you're with us. We have a lot more to tell you about. The Campbellsville Police Department made a dream come true for a member of their community. We'll tell you what they did when we come back on WKYT this morning. Welcome back to WKYT This Morning. It is a heartbreaking mystery for a Kentucky family. Police are still trying to figure out who killed a Barron County woman. Investigators say someone found Kristen Edwards' body inside a tote bag in the Green River. Her family says they cannot understand why someone would want to kill her. Edwards' grandmother's remembering her. Sabira Rayford has the story. 
sick from tragedy. I don't know how can anybody do something like that to such a pretty, pretty girl. Linda Pedigo says her granddaughter, Kristen Edwards, was always there for her. Beautiful. I was she was so pretty. And I'm going to miss her. Pedigo says Grandma's house was a place where Edwards felt at home. Oh, Mama, you know I got to look pretty. I said, well, you don't have to wear all the little makeup stuff to make it look pretty. Edwards would leave sweet notes to let her grandmother know she was thinking about her. She loved her memo. Pedigo says it meant something to her because visitors could be rare. She was fun. She was, I loved having her around. The love from her granddaughter still etched on her front door. It felt good having her around. At least I knew someone cared, you know. When police announced it was Edwards' body found in the Green River earlier this week, it was something Pedigo wasn't prepared for, but something she's been through before. She lost her son when he was 17, just a few years younger than Edwards. My son died. I felt like it took a piece of my heart out. Now I feel like rest of a stone. For now, Pedigo says she will still have her memories. I love her. We was always hugging. She said there's my chair side of it. Always. I said I love her and I miss her. Sabir Rayford, WKYT. Well, family members say Edwards left behind two children. Police have not said if they have any suspects in this case. We have learned more about a deadly crash in Whitley County. Investigators have not identified a man killed as James Gambrell of Woolham. State police say Gambrell's coal truck crossed the center line of Highway 92 and went over an embankment. They say he died at the scene. Police think wet roads and medical, a medical condition may have played a role in the crash. The family of a Georgia woman says that they are relieved that the man convicted of killing her is back in jail. Police arrested Billy Birchfield in Laurel County last month. He was convicted of manslaughter in the 1973 death of his wife, Sue Birchfield, in Georgia. But six years later, he escaped from prison and he went on the run. Police say Billy Birchfield later started using his dead cousin's name and moved to Laurel County. The victim's family says they thought Birchfield would never be found again. The Campbellsville Police Department made a dream come true for a member of their community. Brendan Wheatley has Down syndrome, and family members say for his 23rd birthday, his wish was to become a police officer. Campbellsville Police made it happen, swearing him in as an officer for the day, even giving him a uniform. He went out with a patrol officer, and he helped with an arrest during a traffic stop. Officers say they appreciated having Wheatley on the force. He tells the officers that when they go in to eat, I want to, I want to come help you. Wheatley also received a proclamation from Governor Matt Bevan. Our time this morning, 4.53 on WKYT. And just ahead, we'll have a look at some of the news stories that we're working on for you this morning. And we will have another look at your morning forecast coming right up. Good morning. Welcome back into WKYT this morning on your Friday. It's 4.56. We hope your day's off to an awesome start. Let's get a look at some of the stories we're working on for you this morning. We're following a story out of Anderson County this morning. We've learned that a truck was washed away after trying to cross a flooded out road last night. So far, rescue crews in Anderson County have not found the truck or whoever was inside of it. We have a crew on the scene. We'll have you the latest details for you coming up at the top of the hour. Summer is drawing to an end for school age kids. Tomorrow, the YMCA of Central Kentucky is partnering with Fayette County Schools to host several back to school rallies. We're looking ahead to those and see how the kids can get prepared for the new school year that's coming up on WKYT this morning. Whether or not you like it, it is here. It's time for those kiddos to go back to school. Just about there. That's the parents right. may like it, though. Uh, it, true. <laughs> and everybody has kind of started adjusting their schedules about now. It's a WKYT first alert severe weather day because we're going to be watching the possibility of uh, downpours again. Yeah. It could be a potential for that. Let's check in with Micah. Yeah, and it's hit and miss today. Not everybody will see the rain, but if you do, you'll get some heavy downpours, brief heavy downpours, like we're seeing this morning across Casey County and also back toward Jesmond County. Now, we go through the day, obviously. Not everybody will see some of those rain showers and thunderstorms. Now, as we get through the day, once we hit the nighttime hours, still looking at the opportunity for another wave to come flying on through that gives us a couple rumbles of thunder for the west. So it's really on and off as we go through the day. This is kind of hit and miss. We'll get into that forecast. I'll also talk about the weekend coming up with another two hours of WKYT News in just a couple of minutes.